So we'll light an Advent wreath together in our minds, if nothing else. Here's the Lane family who lit the candle last year. The kids have grown up a bit more since then. The benefit of having quite so many candles is when you've got a family of four, you can get the kids to light them. And now the fourth candle, the one for Mary. I know some people say the pink candle should be lit on the third Sunday, but it always seems to have more sense to light the pink candle on this fourth Sunday when we give thanks to God for Mary. So shall we use this prayer? God, our Father, the angel Gabriel told the Virgin Mary that she was to be the mother of your son. Though Mary was afraid, she responded to your call with joy. Help us, whom you call to serve you, to share like her in your great work of bringing to our world your love and healing. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who is coming into the world. Amen. And for our first hymn, here's the holly and the ivy, sung by Paula Bishop, but you can sing along if you wish. The holly and the ivy, when they are both full grown, all the trees that are in the wood, the holly bears the crown, or the rising of the sun and the running as lily flow, and Mary bore sweet Jesus Christ to be a sweet Saviour, or the rising of the sun and the running of the When the Lord comes, he will bring to light things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought and word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbour as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, 
Have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, our Redeemer, who prepared the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of your Son, grant that, as she looked for his coming as our Saviour, so we may be ready to greet him when he comes again as our Judge, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now Mary is going to read to us. Uh, Mary, Julie, it's been a long day. Julie is going to read to us from Micah. <laughs> but you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, you are one of the little clans of Judah. From you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labour has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The angel Gabriel from heaven came.
the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this has happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfilment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Then the story continues with Mary singing her hymn of praise, the Magnificat. Here it is, sung by the boys of St Edmundsbury Cathedral Choir. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> the Sunday before Christmas, and we, focus <coughs> and we focus on Mary. I've shared this Annunciation painting with you before, but it's worth looking at again. It's probably by the Dutch artist Robert Campin, painting about 1425, later made into a triptych, a three-part painting by an assistant. We have Mary sitting and reading, a wise young lady taking in wisdom. 
she hasn't noticed that Gabriel always is present, or indeed that her candle has just blown out. Coming in through the left-hand window is the light of the Spirit, a flying Jesus holding his cross, and that's replacing the light of the candle, and it's heading straight for Mary's womb. On the right, we have Joseph, the carpenter at work, and on the left, we have the people who'd purchased the image. We don't have definite names for them. One source suggests they might be Peter Engelbrecht and his wife, Marguerite. He was a merchant from Cologne. They've come into the Virgin's garden. The door is open. They are kneeling, watching the scene unfold before them. This painting reminds us why all this is important. We have Mary and Gabriel in the centre. I love the sense of perspective, the way the angel is entering the room. God is in the top left-hand corner of the painting, and he's looking directly at Mary. Joseph is on the right. Apparently, he's huddled by the fire to remind us that Jesus will be born in the winter. Over on the left, we don't have the donors. We have the scene of Adam and Eve being expelled from paradise. We listened to Adam Leahy Bounden at our Zoom service last week. The Annunciation is the start of the healing of the sin of Adam and Eve. Even the garden, which became a wilderness, is becoming a garden again. And you can probably guess the symbolism of the rabbits, fertility at its best. The artist is Giovanni Di Paolo, an Italian painter working in Siena. Born 1403, died 1482. This is part of a larger altarpiece. We could happily spend the next few hours looking at lovely Annunciation paintings and feeling warm and snug and uplifted. And that may be a brilliant thing to do today. But of course, art also has the power to challenge us. I did an art course earlier this year and we discussed this Annunciation painted in 2000 by John Collier, an American artist. We have the lily, the symbol of Mary's purity. And again, Mary is reading a book. Collier wrote about how he portrayed Mary as a schoolgirl to remind us that she was normal. And when we looked at this on the course, everybody else was saying how much they liked this painting, that the incarnation is so human. I kept quiet because I don't like it. For me, this Mary is too young and I find it very unsettling. The warning bells of safeguarding are ringing and that's never a comfortable place to me. I don't want to start a discussion on consent, but when you think about it, there is something a little unsettling about the power dynamics of the Christmas story. Like many a young lady, who finds herself in a position she doesn't expect to be in, Mary has to go and find help. Not something she could talk to mum about, so she goes and sees her cousin. A cousin, probably a bit older than her, more an auntie. And Elizabeth too has found herself in a position she didn't expect to be. And I always think that God silencing her husband Zechariah was a bit unfair on both of them unable to talk together through the implications of all that had happened. This painting is the visitation of the Virgin to St. Elizabeth from the workshop of Gossam van der Weyden. It's in the National Gallery, part of an altarpiece painted around 1500. There is symbolism in the Bible reading of Elizabeth's baby leaping in the womb as Mary arrives. John the Baptist recognizing Jesus the Messiah even before they've been born. The symbolism of young and old women, both bearing children who will be incredible messengers of God. Indeed, one is God himself. It's all a bit mind boggling, just as it is when as the first time as a dad, you put your hand on your partner's thumb and feel a child move underneath. It may be perfectly natural, but it's still pretty mind blowing. And Mary's response to all this is the Magnificat, a song of praise. A song of praise because God is at work. 
Humanity is being restored. The kingdom of God is coming. Emmanuel, God with us. At the heart of Christmas is the Church of England's logo and slogan this Christmas. And at the moment, it does feel quite hard to live up to. I want church to be at the heart of people's Christmases this year. I want to get them in, help them remember how important we are, be the vicar of successful churches. But I'm scared stiff about COVID and big numbers. And a large part of me doesn't want to see anyone this week. I just want to remain healthy and virus free so we can celebrate Christmas with our kids. But I need to remember that it's not just church that should be at the heart of Christmas this year. It's not church, it's Christ. We will proclaim his love in and through our church buildings. We will proclaim his love in and through church, which is not the same as church buildings. We will bring people together and we will support them when we're separate. This afternoon, I'll be christening Zachary at St Edmunds. We married mum and dad, Lee and Emma, a couple of years ago. We baptised Vienna, child number one, as well. Lee is a paramedic. He served in the army, and he's currently working with the United Nations in the Ukraine. He says at the moment it's extremely boring because peace is being kept. And when peace is being kept, there's not a lot for a paramedic to do. If the peace stops being kept, that's when he'll really be needed. Well, if I was a young married couple with two young children, I wouldn't want my other half serving in what might well be a war zone. Oh, how lovely they are together at Christmas. And if they ask the church to be part of their Christmas celebrations, if they want their child to be baptised, what a privilege. I want them to have a deeper faith. I'd love them to be here every Sunday, not just on Thursday for toddler group, but we will serve them, look after them, pray for them, and we will do it with joy. We are called to be God's people in this world, in prayer, worship, love, support and protest. The Magnificat Cat is not just a beautiful piece of music. It is a manifesto of a different world, a just world, a fair world. I'm not going to comment on one rule for us, one rule for them, referring to Christmas parties or indeed anything else. I'm almost too tired to protest. But this picture from UNICEF reminds us where we are as God's people at this current time. And I suspect that a newly pregnant Mary, unable to understand what was happening and with no loving partner to lean on or share with, was even more shattered than I am. And we know that many, many people are tired, worn out, and they will keep going. This is the alternative collect that we could have used today. I thought it sums up very well where we are. And it reminds us all that God is with us. Shall we pray it together? Eternal God, as Mary waited for the birth of your son, so we wait for his coming in glory. Bring us through the birth pangs of this present age to see with her our great salvation in Jesus Christ, <coughs> Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Judy, could you leave the creed, please, while my voice goes? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let's just pray. As we pray to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we say with Mary, Lord, have mercy on those who fear you. Holy is your name. Your prophet of old foretold a day when a virgin would conceive and bear a son who would be called God with us. Help us to look forward to your deliverance and to seek the fullness of your kingdom. Help us to look forward, to have faith, and to believe. Lord, have mercy on those who fear you. Holy is your name. Your angel declared to Mary that she was to be the mother of the Saviour. We pray for mothers and fathers in our world today. Those who are afraid, those for whom COVID means they must face so much alone, those for whom Christmas is such a difficult time. Help us, Lord, to love and support them and help us to rejoice. Help every Christian person to be open to your word and obedient to your will. Lord, have mercy on those who fear you. Holy is your name. Mary rejoiced with Elizabeth and sang your praise. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. Even when this is such a different Christmas, help us to live joyful lives that sing your praise. Lord, have mercy on those who fear you. Holy is your name. Mary bore a son of David's line, born a king whose reign would never end. Bless all the nations of the world with Christ's gift of peace. We pray for our leaders, for trust, honesty and wisdom. It feels as if creation is groaning in pain. Creation needs God, Christ's gift of peace. Lord, have mercy on those who fear you. Holy is your name. Child Jesus grew in wisdom and such in the home of Mary and Joseph. Strengthen our homes and families and keep under your protection all whom we love. We pray for those we would love to see this Christmas, for friends who would love to be here worshipping with us. We pray for our young people and ask your blessing on them. Lord, have mercy on those who fear you. Holy is your name. At the foot of the cross of Christ stood his mother, and from the cross she received his lifeless body in her arms. Give comfort and healing to all who suffer and all who watch the suffering of those they love. Lord, have mercy on those who fear you. Holy is your name. The Apostle John saw a vision of a woman in heaven, robed with the sun. Bring us with all those who have died in the faith of Christ to share the joy of heaven with Mary and all the saints. Lord, have mercy on those who fear you. 
holy is your name. Mighty and everlasting God, you have stooped to raise fallen humanity by the childbearing of Blessed Mary. Grant that we who have seen your glory revealed in our human nature and your love made perfect in our weakness may daily be renewed in your image and conformed to the pattern of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We bring our prayers together as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you very much. What would I do without, without you? And thank you, Matt, as well. Let's sing, O Little Town of Bethlehem.
Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you, scatter the darkness from before your path, and make you to ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Advent God, we journey with you to Bethlehem stable and a newborn king. Ears attuned to the song of angels, eyes alert for Bethlehem star. Forgive us if on our journey we are distracted and weighed down by the things of this world. Keep our hearts aflame with the hope of Christmas and the promise of our Saviour. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Lovely. And let's David play us out nice and festively.
there we are. I hope you enjoyed that. 